Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's just finish off the slides. Really, this is stuff that you guys can actually read in your open time. All right, so I'm not going to spend too much time here. Okay, so we were just talking about how um, when it comes to racial scale data, here we're talking about things that can't be negative. So for instance, my body weight, okay? It can't be negative. It's going to start from zero going upwards, okay? Also distance. If I say, how far away from Boston College do you live? All right, it obviously can't be zero. Even if you live right outside the gate, it's going to be one meter, or it's going to be half a meter E to C to C, but it's not going to be zero, okay? So that's ratio uh, data or data, right, depending on um, where you come from, yeah. All right, then we have tables and graphs, all right? Tables and graphs, guys, literally, this is just our way of putting this raw data. So if I'm to count how many students I have, how did each of them perform? You know, how many people got Bs? How many people got Cs? I can obviously write that down on a piece of paper, all right? All that information, your name, your surname, everything. But then it doesn't look so neat. It's not easy for me to interpret by just looking. But if I put that on a graph, I can see, okay, I have a total of uh, so many students, and 10 of them got As, 5 of them got Bs, and then 2 of them got Cs. Okay, does it make sense? So just by looking at it once, I can see all that information. Okay, and that's why we like to use tables, graphs, and things to that effect. So that we can quickly interpret what the data is actually telling us. Okay, then we start to step into specific um, 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 graphs and tables. Here they're speaking about the frequency distribution table. Now, with the frequency distribution table, they're saying, okay, how many people fall between 75 and 100 or 90. How many people scored between um, 74 and 60? And how many scored between 59 and 50? Okay, we're putting in those those groups and then we're saying how many, how many, how many in each of those groups um, do we have? Um, how many students do we have in each of those groups? Okay, that's typically it. Then here now they're talking about the steps how you can actually do that, okay? All right, so have a look at this, the slides, and then obviously just look in your manual as to how those graphs look like. Here you can see this is an example of a frequency distribution table, okay? And this is based on eye color. So here you can see um, we have the total number of employees, okay? We have then the relative frequency, and then we have the percentage frequency of the person. Okay, and then here we have the time of the policy. Yeah, it is the person. And this is the frequency. Okay. And this is the time. Right. So basically, what we want from you in this unit is to be able to obviously produce these facts for you. That's it. Um, here, now they're just showing us a bar graph, okay? Bar graph, we have spaces in between. That's the difference between a histogram and a bar graph. We just have spaces in between, okay? Um, then they're talking on this slide, the construction of a pie chart. Okay, we all know it's that graph where we have a circle, all right? And then obviously we divide it according to what takes up what percentage of whatever we're looking at. In this case, we're looking at eye color of employees, okay? Then uh, tables, uh, frequency distribution tables of quantitative data. Okay. Speaking to what we've already spoken on, how many observations, uh, the variable fall into each class, okay? Here, they're just emphasizing that it's group data that we're looking at. We're not looking at individual stuff, it's more of how many people scored between 75 and 90. How many, so can you see we're looking, we're focused on the groups. Okay, how many A's do we have? How many B's do we have? How many C's do we have? E C, 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 C. Okay, 
for instance, we could also say if all of us were to run 100 meters, all right, and then we're to time all of our runs, we would say how many people managed to do it in 10 minutes, how many people managed to do it in more than 10 minutes but under 15 minutes, how many people took 20 minutes, okay, so yeah, that's a lot, eh? 20 minutes for 100 meters, yeah, pretty much. All right, I'm sure you could walk faster than uh, uh, meters and so on. Yeah, it's probably good faster than that. Okay, then here they are then looking at, again, here I think they're looking at frequency distribution tables, and then they're talking about the midpoint and the cumulative uh, less, all right, than frequency value, okay? Uh, the midpoint, to obtain the midpoint, you simply divide the star with by 2 and then add the result to the lower limit of the star. Okay, lower limit, remember we said we're looking at from 75 and above. The 75 would then be that lower limit. Okay, then the uh, 2 which is less. Uh, then frequency value for the class, we can determine the number of values in the data set that are less than the upper limit. Okay, so we're basically saying it can be set 75 to 90. So we're saying how many values in that data set are less than the upper limit? Okay. Okay, in the data set, so the whole set. So in other words, is there somebody who achieved 92%, 94%, okay? Ah, no, sorry. I, how many people actually achieved less than 90? Because remember, the upper limit is 90%, sorry. Sorry about that. Okay, so we want to know how many people actually achieved less than 90. All right, happiness there, okay? Then we move on to histograms. Like I said, histograms are like bar charts. The only difference is that with histograms, there are no gaps. Okay? Then there they're talking about how you construct them. Then here they're again speaking to uh, cumulative uh, or frequency, um, 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 frequency of holobonds. Holobonds, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Holograms, okay, which is pretty much the same thing as your frequency distribution, but now we're using a line, all right? And the reason why we're using a line, all right, is to show the shape of the distribution, okay? So that will also then show us typically what are the, what is the trend in the case. Most people manage to achieve a percentage of 70%, okay? All right, so that's and then again, this is just a breakdown on how we can actually go about building those types of graphs. Okay. And ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Okay. All right. So again, 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 please just go through the slides, and go through your manual, make sure that you understand how you can how to actually make those graphs. I don't think they usually will. I, when we did, yeah. So, so, so this is what that's exactly what I want to speak. When before we did this calculation, this is pretty much the same thing. The slide we did, the topic of this. All right. So, the topics are the same. so how are you testing on this? Is that we actually did see the graph, and then you must have taken it. I've never seen them use the answer to do the